Years ago, before I was properly inducted into the functional language cult, I asked a longtime inductee, what is a monad? After hearing him and his friends talk about them with a reverence usually reserved for religious artifacts. Oddly, he didn't give a very good answer, which only deepened the mystery for me. But now, after many years of drinking the functional Kool-Aid, which has had no side effects, by the way, I'm in a position to answer that. A monad is a type with an and-then operator. As usual, this is a familiar concept that's been given an intimidating mathematical name, but you've almost certainly already seen this pattern. It's so common that you can find Hollywood screenwriters implementing it. For example, here's Aston Kutcher in Dude, Where's My Car? Yeah, I'd like to place an order. Um, what'd you like? Yeah, I'd like uh, three orders of garlic chicken. And then? And then three orders of white rice. And then? Uh, gosh, I think that's about it. And then? No, that's it. And then? No, and then. I, I, that's, that's all I want. And then? Here, he's forgotten how to use the return operator, but I'm getting ahead of myself. Say you wanted to get out of a locked room and someone gave you a note that said, check the desk, reverse the letters in the next clue. And on the desk was another note that said, open the reward. You remember the first clue, so you remember reward is just drawer backwards. So you look in the drawer. And in the drawer was a key with a note that said, unlock the door. And unlocking the door worked. Such a process is elegantly coded with a monad. Let's put the clues in an association list, a list of location clue pairs. Once we've done this, we can use the standard prelude's lookup function to find the next clue. Note that lookup returns a maybe type. Nothing indicates the key wasn't found. This is important if we're given an erroneous clue. Let's write a function lookup for that takes a string in an association list and produces a maybe string since the process might fail. To begin with, we'll call lookup on the association list with the first key. Now, this might fail, so we'll return nothing in that case. The other possibility is that we found the second key, in which case we'll call lookup again, which in turn might fail or give us the next key, and so on. All the way to the fourth key, where we'll announce you succeeded if the key is found. Now, like any good programmer, I'm lazy, so when I find repeating code like we have here, I immediately think there must be a better way. The repeating pattern appears to be this, but there's that annoying call to reverse after the second clue. The more basic operation is check the maybe. If it's nothing, quit. Otherwise, extract the key from the just and pass it to the next step. Let's introduce a function if just that does this. If just takes a maybe string representing the result of the last lookup and a function that takes a string to look up and produces a maybe string. Overall, if just also produces a maybe string. Its type signature is more complicated than its implementation, which just returns nothing if that's what is received. Otherwise, it passes the key it found to the function. With if just, lookup for shrinks in half and lets us focus more on the operations than the error handling, which we've relegated to if just. It's even clearer if we use if just as a binary operator. We can even drop most of the parentheses. We just stumbled across a monad. It turns out the central operation of a monad is an operation called bind that has a type signature that matches that of our if just. You might recognize the bind operator. It's hiding in the icon for the Haskell language. And sure enough, maybe is an instance of the monad type class. Furthermore, maybe's implementation of the bind operator is exactly that of our if just function. So we can save ourselves the effort of writing if just and just use the bind operator directly. Sequences of monadic operations like this are so convenient that there's a simple syntax for them in Haskell, do blocks, which automatically inserts the bind operations in the lambdas for you. The one difference is that you write the argument of the next step before each step rather than after, as you do with lambda expressions. In addition to bind, the monad type class defines return, which promotes a normal value into the monad type. This is exactly what our final just is doing, so it would be better style to use return. Here's the final version, which is far clearer than the original because it's written to focus on the fundamentally sequential nature of the algorithm. Magically, all the error handling has been relegated to the maybe in the type signature. There's a variant of bind written without the equals that behaves like bind but discards the results of the previous computation. This is used for things like put string, which just returns unit. If you don't write a left pointing arrow with your expression, the do block notation turns it into this kind of bind. Now, maybe and I.O. are hardly the only instances of monad in Haskell, although they might be the most useful. 
lists, either, pairs, and even all functions are monad with appropriately defined bind and return operators. I'll capture the basic idea of expressing sequential operations by passing results through a monadic type like this. Of course, there's a lot more to say about monads, but this should give you a practical starting point for understanding them.